Hey, what's up fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily and today I have a fun knitting podcast for you. It's been a few really busy weeks for me on the work side of things. Once we got back from the winter break, it was full on show mode and I was in rehearsals on the weekends in the evenings. Then we had our show performances for this like multidisciplinary arts performance that I was the staff advisor for at my school. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work. I am so proud of the students and I'm proud that that's behind me for at least the next little while. We're just kind of in debriefing meetings now. This was our first time in a new theater and there was a lot of learning that came from that. Um, so a very creatively intense January, but it was a lot of fun. Um, once again, it was really rewarding to build a lot of connections with students that I don't necessarily get to see in my classroom. So yeah, that's what I've been up to amongst all of the, the knitting and other things. So the plan for today is to share with you what I've been working on. I don't have any finished objects today, but I've got a couple of whips that are 60% to 70% through. So some good amount of stuff to talk about there. I have an update on my Marl Mirage sock pattern that if it's not already out when this goes up, it will be coming out soon. I will let you know. And a couple of acquisitions to share with you. So a decent amount to chat about today. I am filming the day before Valentine's Day. I am home today instead of at school because we have parent teacher interviews a little later on. And so I'm just in Valentine's mode. I'm wearing a pink linen shirt. And then this is my camisole number four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this in summer 2021 and the yarns that I used are from Trailhead Yarns. Um, sorry for the shaking. Trailhead does plant-based yarns and so I held two lace weights together for this. The Cabot Trail which was 100% Tencel and Fundy Tides which was a linen cotton slub kind of combo but both of them are in this colorway called Oyster which is silver with orange and blue speckles throughout it and I knit this around the time that I was very much in a gray phase before I kind of decided that I prefer warmer toned things on myself. But this top still gets a lot of good wear. Because it's plant based fibers, I do put it in the washing machine occasionally. And that works out quite well for me. So I thought I'd put it on with my pink shirt for some spring Valentine's Day vibes, even though you're probably seeing this at least a week after Valentine's Day. I also thought it would be handy to just wear something like this so that when it comes time to try on my sibling sweater for you, it's a little easier to facilitate. Before we get into all my projects, I want to say a big thank you to Merit Beauty, who is the sponsor of today's video. Merit is reimagining luxury beauty products to make them well edited and accessible. All of their skin first formulations are considered luxury but priced at about 30% less than traditional luxury brands. Regardless of whether I'm wearing makeup, I always include great skin as part of my skincare routine. The hyaluronic acid is super moisturizing and the niacinamide helps to brighten and even my skin. When I am wearing makeup, I always start with the Minimalist in Linen, and I love how the fatty acids in this product make it super blendable and give a nice conditioned and smooth finish. Today I'm wearing the Flush Balm in the colorway Beverly Hills, and you can just see the vitamin E in this gives it such a glowy finish. Then I go in with Brow 1980 and Clean Lash. These are a couple of my all-time favorite makeup products. They give length, they give volume, they look natural, but they last all day. One of my favorite things about this mascara is that it never flakes or transfers to my under eyes. What's new from Merit this month is their signature lip matte finish. And this formulation is still just as soft and hydrating as their original signature lips, but now in a more intense pigment. Like a lot of their other products, the Signature Lip Matte contains hyaluronic acid, so even though you have that matte finish, it's not going to dry your lips out at all. The color palette is super nicely curated, 
Today I'm wearing the color Classic, which is a neutral pink, but there's also cool toned and warm toned bright pops of color. I've been wearing Merit makeup for well over a year now, I think closer to two years, and I can't recommend their products enough. You can shop discounted Merit sets and my favorite products using my link. Every first Merit order is going to ship with their signature bag and orders over $40 will get free shipping. Thank you so much Merit for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into all my projects. I've got all my notes handwritten today. So I think we're going to get started with my shift cowl. I can't remember which video it was in. It might have been my 2024 yarn pantry update, but I think it was actually my most recent podcast episode where I held up a couple of skeins of yarn together and I was like, ooh, this would be a really fun and exciting combo. And it turns out that that is in fact the case. The yarns were my leftover Sendiskarn Sunday in the colorway Magenta that I had used in my Norwegian Rose headband and a skein of Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Where's My Bike that I received as a Secret Santa gift. And I looked at the yarns and I was like, I wonder what I could do with these. And then I thought, I just really need a project that I can have fun with. Something that is going to feel low stakes, something that I can be playful with, something that is going to be a little new and a little different for me. And so what I landed on after a little bit of emming and eyeing is the Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. And this is the first time, oh, this is looking really, really good. Um, I cast this on actually at a knit night that my friend Tar hosted of Tar Knits. She's a hoot, her podcast is, she's just so funny. Um, and so it was knit night, I got to meet a couple of new knitting friends. I got to see some knitting friends I already had. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got maybe four rows in before I realized that it was going to be way too difficult to continue and I'd be better off working on stockinette while socializing. But I am now on the last increase section before I need to start decreasing. So this cowl is constructed as a, I think it's technically a pentagon. So this edge here, which does not have eye cord, this is a slipped edge, is going to be sewn down to another slipped edge that's gonna form here. And it's gonna wrap around my neck. And then I'm gonna keep working and start decreasing until this comes to a point. So this is one of those cowls that's meant to look like a triangle scarf but it's not a triangle scarf. It's gonna be seamed at the back. Now, this pattern is actually written for three colors of the Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool, which is a sport weight yarn. It's a color changing yarn that's meant to look like it's been hand spun. Odds are you're probably familiar with the yarn. And I, didn't use that yarn, <laughs> clearly. Um, I really wanted this to be an opportunity, like I said, to have fun with color, to be a little more experimental, a little bit playful, in, in again, just like kind of a low stakes way. So even though the pattern is written for three color changing yarns, I have taken some liberties and I am actually working with one, two, three, four, five, five? different yarns, five different yarns. So I'll see if I can share those with you. First yarns are the leftover Sunday in magenta, as well as I've hand wound all of my skinny singles. Where's My Bike is a really fun colorway because it's got the hot pink, it's got the green, it's got some black speckles and some turquoise speckles. So I thought that this would be a really good unifying color and also the speckles kind of adding a little bit of a modeling or a blending effect so that it's not just sharp solids all over. And then I'm also using some of my leftover Pura from Originally Lovely. This was an affiliate gift 
and I use this in my Eva cardigan by Petite Knit. So I'm really happy to be using some leftovers immediately from some recent projects in this as well. I also have some more leftovers. I have my Birch and Lily Birch Sock in the colorway Marvelous. This was a gift. And I am holding that with a strand of mohair from the Knitting Loft. This is their dust base in the colorway Squashed Plums. And this was from my January 2020, February, my February 2022 project, my Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. So I'm holding these two together for kind of a soft pink mauve moment to help mute out some of the hot pink. And then lastly, but certainly not least, I am using some yarn that was gifted to me by a viewer. The lace weight yarn here in the smaller ball is the Sonder Yarn Co. Luna base, which is, I believe, a BFL Massim mix. And then their Halo base, which is their, their Silk Mohair. And these are in a kind of mucky green, chartreuse limey green colorway called Habitant. Now I'm really happy to be using these yarns because when Jerry gifted them to me, I was like, these are so special. I've been wanting to use Sonder Yarn Co. yarn for so long, but because it was a lace weight skein of wool and then the silk mohair, I was struggling to come up with a pattern or a project to use this yarn in. And I kind of realized that I was just being a little too precious about it and that I wanted to work it up. And I thought that this would be a fun way to work it up, but I'll still 100% have a substantial amount left over, especially of the mohair, because what I'm doing is I'm holding two strands of the lace weight with a strand of the mohair to get a light DK, kind of matching the fingering plus the mohair or the double stranded figuring or the straight up DK that I'm using in this project. Because I'm using so many different colors and different weights, I think that this slip stitched texture is really helping to blend things out. If I were using this many different kinds of yarns in something like a striped stockinette project, I might not be as pleased with how the yarns are working together, but I think the texture definitely helps. Now, when I started this, I started with the magenta as the main color and where's my bike as my sort of dappled slip stitch color. And then when I got to the end of this pink section, I was kind of feeling uncertain about the project. I felt like it was a lot of pink. I felt like it was a little overwhelming or a little more color blocked than I wanted it to be. But I ultimately decided like I wanted to persevere on this and get it done. I am supposed to be going to camp with my school at the end of February and I think this will be a really good accessory to have with my burgundy coat. Pop of color, something warm, something low fuss. So I persevered and when I decided to start using Where's My Bike as the background color, and then the solids as my slip stitch colors or my contrast colors. I think that kind of unlocked, unlocked the project for me. It kind of became what I needed it to be a little bit more. And I think that using the speckled color as the background just kind of blended things out a little more than this. I think this is definitely more color blocked than what we're looking at up here. So the section I'm currently on, I'm using Where's My Bike as the background color and Magenta as my main, as my contrast color. But like I said, I'm about halfway through this final section of increasing. And then there's two sections of decreasing before I can seam this together and have a completed cowl. So this has been a lot of fun. It's the first time I'm doing mosaic knitting as well, so we're aligned with some of the skill extension goals that I have for this year. 
I think this would be a really fun pattern for a mini stain set or an advent where you have a main color and then your, your sort of slip stitch color and then that main color becomes a slip stitch color in the next section and so on and so forth. I think that could be a really nice way to use up a slightly smaller set of special skeins. I don't think you necessarily would use up a whole 24 skein mini skein set on a project like this but it's also a great leftover project as I'm kind of trying to demonstrate here I've tossed together leftovers from one two three different projects and then a couple new yarns to round it out and I think it's turning out super fun. I think that's actually the first time that I am going to complete an Andrea Mowry pattern. I did start this time last year, or at this time last year, I maybe had already frogged uh, Stripes Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I like her pattern writing style. I am finding with this one, it took me a little while to get into the groove of things because it is written line by line. It's it's not charted. Um, I don't think it needs to be charted, but the pattern is written line by line so that you can maintain the motifs of the slip stitches and you get the correct shape for turning it into the sort of triangle cowl. So it is different from, for example, a triangle shawl where you can kind of start at a point and increase until you kind of run out of yarn. You do need to be cognizant of how much yarn you're consuming so that you have enough to decrease to that point. And so I think by having the five yarns mixed together in this situation, um, that's helping me out a bit because I, I have more than plenty of yarn. The next project I'm gonna share with you is my sibling sweater by Laura Penrose. So just as a reminder, the yarns that I'm using in this project are the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, and my main color is Elderflower, my contrast color is Fennel Seed, and I think this pairing is like match made in heaven. Um, this was something I actually messaged back and forth with Tar about because I wanted, I knew for sure I wanted the Fennel Seed, but I was waffling over the contrast that I wanted. Um, but I'm really, really happy with what I landed on here. The yarn so far has been fun to work with. It is soft and wooly at the same time. It almost has kind of like a tackiness or a stickiness to it that I find kind of nice. It is similar to the Sendus Garn Double Sunday, but I find it more enjoyable to work with because it's a little more toothy. Um, it has less stretchiness to it, which is what I was finding frustrating about the Sennis Garn. And I think it has a slightly more matte finish. So it just feels a little more natural to me, even though they're both 100% wool yarns. Now, when last I showed this sweater to you, I was just about to join under the arm, or maybe I just had the back panel. I think I just had the back panel. And I was like, maybe next time you see it, I'll be joined under the arm. And I am joined under the arm, but I'm also done the body. So here we are. This is my sibling sweater by Laura Penrose so far. The pattern is outstanding. It's ingenious. I think the level of thought and attention to detail that has to go into a striped sweater and making sure that the stripes work out and everything is balanced is kind of like it's it blows my mind um i'm thinking specifically like here where you sort of cast on stitches for the neckline having that be in the middle of a stripe i think is a really smart way to go about doing things because i think sometimes when the neckline is right at the top slash bottom of a stripe it can kind of look like it pulls that stripe up a little I haven't knit my collar yet, so I can't say for sure if that's gonna be the case or not, but I caught that detail in the pattern and I was just like, right on, that, that's pretty great. Giving this a little bit of a steam block this morning definitely helps to open up 
this shoulder detail. So your back panel's not shaped with short rows. It's shaped with just increasing on both sides. And I'm really, really liking how crispy that is looking. Now I'm gonna try it on and talk a little bit more about the fit. This is actually the first time that I'm trying this on since giving it a steam block this morning. But I have tried it on since binding off the body prior to a steam block. So here we go. First thing I want to talk about is this neckline. This neckline is looking quite large to me right now. I've knit everything per the pattern to the row. So this is how it's supposed to be. I think I've seen people comment on how the neckline seems kind of big to begin with. And the pattern does suggest that if you want to go the route of picking up stitches for the neckline, knitting the neckline, and then knitting it down, that is going to give you a stretchier neckline. And Laura suggests that you add elastic in to help prevent some excessive stretching of the neckline. That's in contrast to picking up the neckline, knitting it, binding it off, and then sewing it down, which is my preferred method just because I find knitting down double folded necklines to be tedious. And, you know, if you can't see the inside, I don't mind the sewing. So anyway, I decided that I would like to try to knit elastic in to the inner fold of the collar so that I don't need to weave any elastic in at the end. This comes from the recommendation of Mel from String Things by Mel, and she's talked about some of the elastics that she recommends. So I did end up ordering the Prim elastic, which is a clear and very thin elastic, but that's not coming for another couple of weeks. And so I'm kind of waiting patiently, or as patiently as possible, for that to arrive. I figure I'll prioritize finishing my cowl, but in the meantime, I have started one of my sleeves. Now, the reason I gave this a steam block was because when I tried it on without the steam block, I was feeling like the sweater was looking kind of lumpy and bumpy, and it was making me nervous. I feel like I am always really concerned about sweaters when I've just done the body, and there's no sleeves and there's been no blocking, it kind of, I question whether or not it's gonna work out. I know I need to just trust the process, but we have the technology. So I gave it a steam block this morning. And I think that's also going to be helpful for just making sure I get a good sleeve length. I don't think I've done a raglan for about a year now. I think the last raglan I knit was my Tulsa Tea by Rebecca Klo. I've only done drop shoulders or my Eva cardigan, I believe is considered English tailoring. Um, but the Storm Sweater by Petite Knit, my sweater number 25 by My Favorite Things Knitwear had really significant shoulder drops. They were coming to like the bottom of my bicep, if like that's the bottom of my bicep, or in the case of sweater number 25, it came like uh, around my elbow. So this is looking currently like it'll be a bit less of a drop, especially once the collar has been knit. I suspect this will come up a little bit higher. So I thought that the steam block, and this is recommended in the pattern, um, the steam block just gives a more accurate sense of where your shoulder drop will, will lie. So my plan for the sleeves are to just work on them until the elastic for the collar arrives and then knit the collar and then finish the sleeves because knitting the collar is going to hopefully close up this neckline a little bit, but it will certainly affect where that shoulder drop lands on my arms. I am working this on three and a half millimeter needles, or I work the body on three and a half millimeter needles for both the flat portion and the in the round portion. I'm working my sleeves on 3.75 millimeter needles, and I'm planning to work all of my ribbing on three millimeter needles. It's 
So this is what we've got so far. This is my belly button up here. These are my hip bones over here. So the sweater currently is sitting just a little past my hip bones. I have dog hair on my sweater and I'm liking how it's fitting. It's a little less oversized than I thought it would be. And I think when I give it a wet block, I will really make sure that this ribbing cinches less at the bottom. This back shoulder detail I think is looking awesome. So far, so good. The only thing I will say is that I knit my ribbing on three millimeter needles, but it's still kind of not the nicest. <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about that. I don't love it. Sorry about talking about that in transition. Um, I don't love the way the ribbing is looking. It is frustrating me a little bit actually because like I knitted on three millimeter needles with worsted weight yarn. Why is it not tidy? Um, the inside of the ribbing looks nicer than the outside of the ribbing, which I know is something I've seen a lot of people talking about recently where they'll knit their ribbing inside out so the wrong side of the ribbing shows up on the right side or the sort of world facing side of the garment. So that's something I'll consider doing for the collar and for the sleeves. Um, I don't know that I have it in me to go back and rip out all of that ribbing and re-knit it, especially since I did an Italian bind off. I don't feel like unpicking that. I should have enough yarn though where if I wanted to just cut the Italian bind off, I could cut it and then just use fresh yarn to redo the ribbing. But I, I don't know if I feel like doing that yet. I have just given this a steam block at this point in time. So my hope is that a proper wet block in some warmer water will help the yarn to bloom properly. And that might help to sort of fill out some of the ribbing. My other thing that I'm thinking about is that even though I knit the ribbing on three millimeter needles, I use my Chowgu red lace needles, which are a metal tip. I prefer working on wooden needles. So I think possibly using my three millimeter wooden needles for the collar and the sleeves will help to even out and tighten up that gauge a little bit without having to go to the trouble of knitting it inside out. Yeah, that is my sibling sweater so far. I am really enjoying how these colors are looking together. I'm enjoying how these colors are looking on me. I, I have this dream of going to the Scarborough Bluffs to take finished object photos in this, probably sometime over my March break because I think the colors are kind of springy, but still kind of earthy and will play really nicely off the water and well, I mean, the bluffs, like the cliff sides. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. I feel like I wanted to do my Nata dress photos at the bluffs. I wanted to do photos for my, for another sweater at the bluffs. Like I've, I've, I've wanted to go to the bluffs for finished object photos for a long time now. So I'm going to put it into the universe and hopefully manifest that this time. So yeah, I don't know if this will be done the next time you get to see it, mostly because I'll be waiting for the elastic, but also because there's a couple other things I wanna tell you about. So the next works in progress I will share with you are the samples of my Marl Mirage socks. At the time that I'm filming this, the testing period is now ended but I am still working on a couple of samples. So this one sample that I'm currently working on for the second sock, I am a handful of rows away from knitting the shadow wrap heel. And then I will continue down the foot and the sock will be done. The other sample I'm currently working on, I think I might frog. And here's why. This sample I'm working up with some Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo, and then a strand of the Patton's Croy Sock. And this is on 3.5 millimeter needles. This sample, even though it's probably my favorite color combo I've done so far, 
is the Retrozaria Rosa Pomar Vovo, which is a sport weight wool with a strand of the Knit Picks Stroll Tweed in the colorway Lost Lake Heather. And I'm working this one up on 3.25 millimeter needles. And I'm just finding this to be too tight of a gauge to be comfortable to knit. So much so that I, pun intended, started dragging my heels on finishing these socks because I started to get um, tingling in my left pinky. I think because my needle was placing pressure on my hand right here, it was causing a little bit of nerve irritation. Um, there's been times where like this pinky has been really cold, which is scaring me into thinking I'm causing myself some circulation problems. So I think just like for my well-being, I really should not continue to work on this sock. This one has been a lot more comfortable to work on. So I'm going to prioritize finishing this one so that I have the, the full pair to wear to camp. Whereas this one, I'm not even done the first sock on yet. So I, I wouldn't feel too badly about frogging it. So, I mean, it's a shame because I am almost done the first sock, but at the same time, I cannot fathom knitting a second sock. This sock is going to be a free pattern. As I mentioned, it's knit on 3.25 or 3.5 millimeter needles, depending on your gauge. And the yarn combinations work out to being a heavy DK or a worsted. It's a 20 stitch per four inch gauge, ultimately. The whole sock is worked in two by two rib, and that includes over the shadow wrap heel, as well as across the toe decreases. So it really, even though it's, it's chunky, it has a nice snug fit because of the ribbing. I've written the pattern to have three sizes in it, and I have had all three sizes tested, which was a lot of fun seeing everybody's different color combinations and whatnot. And I know it's nearing the end of winter for a lot of folks, but I think you can never go wrong with a really quick, satisfying, chunky accessory project. So those are all of my current works in progress. Now I do want to chat about a couple of acquisitions. The first one is one that I was expecting. I've been talking about this yarn for at least a month now. Um, and it's my Grenouille Yarn Co. or my Grenouille Co. Yes, I think it's just Grenouille Co. Um, the Bioluminescence Advent from 2023. She did a pre-order of full skeins throughout January for all of the colorways. And it was really the first colorway of the entire advent that captured my heart that I was in love with. It almost made me regret not getting the full advent, to be honest. But I was like, if I see this advent come in a pre-order in January, like this will be the first time I actually pre-order some hand-dyed yarn. And there was a lot of pre-orders that came our way in January. There's a lot of pre-orders that are still coming my way, but this really, this really hit home for me. I am so in love, so obsessed. And so the colorway is called Violet Opal, and I got two skeins of the sock base, which is 8515 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's a 400 meter skein of yarn. And just look at these. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Purple is one of my all-time favorite colors, but I think the purple mixed in with these green speckles and the brown speckles just add this earthy touch to it. It doesn't feel too princessy. It doesn't feel too delicate. It feels, I mean, it feels like, it feels like nature. It feels natural. Bioluminescence was the inspiration, so I'm, I'm not surprised by that. And these are just I'm really, really happy about these. I ordered these not knowing what I wanted to make with them because they're super wash. And the other option was the super wash DK. I kind of knew immediately I wasn't going to get a sweater quantity and trouble myself with knitting a super wash sweater. I know a lot of people do. I just don't think that's the move for me personally. But 
I was contemplating maybe doing a sleeveless top. I have a poor track record with sleeveless tops knit up in wool. What I'm leaning to most at this moment in time is actually doing a Stella quilt cushion with this yarn. And I will probably opt for, if I do the star motif that has multiple colors, I will probably try to pull in some like earthy greens and browns to give some contrast to, but like really let this purple and its speckles shine. Or I could do the single color motif where this is just like the color. And then I could go for something like the elderflower, or I think this might be, actually, no, I don't like that. Um, I don't know, just like picking a neutral, neutral color to go against it. I don't know, we'll see. So really, really happy to have these probably going to be worked up at some point throughout the spring or the summer. There is a chance that, I don't know, my thinking has been that Knit City Toronto in May is where I'm going to get a bunch of mini skeins for a Stella quilt cushion. But I don't know, like I know which vendors are going to be at Knit City, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to find there. So my reasoning for thinking about I'll do the Stella quilt cushion with Knit City yarns is that it kind of gives me that flexibility to see what's there, see what goes together, um, and not feel like I need to plan too much in advance. Whereas if I wanted yarn for a particular sweater, I might be feeling like I'm looking for something really specific that I might not find. I don't know if that rationale makes sense. Hopefully it does. All of that is to say, this yarn is really special to me. I am committed to using it. I will not let it sit around, but I want to make sure it goes into something that is beautiful and that I'm going to get a lot of enjoyment out of. And that's kind of another reason why I am leaning away from making a garment with this yarn. I think things like homewares, like blankets and pillow cushions and the mug rugs that I knit all the time are actually one of the best places to use really special yarns because you get to see them and use them so much more frequently than a garment that you might only wear once a month, if that. So yeah, I'm so happy to have these yarns. I, I don't plan to make a habit of pre-ordering yarns. I don't think that's within my budget currently. However, I'm going to put it on the record that if I do get an advent for 2024, it there's a good chance it'll be the Gunoi Co one because the past two years I have just loved her palettes so much. So the next acquisition I have is actually for a test knit, but I didn't initially purchase it for the test knit. Over the past weekend, I got it into my head that I really want to knit myself a tee this spring. I've knit myself a couple of tees in the past. The very first one was in the fall of 2021. I made the Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland, and I held a strand of Holskarn Super Soft with a strand of the Like It and Lace Silk Mohair to knit that up. And it's a beautiful garment. Um, for one of my very first like sweater projects, actually two of my first like seamless sweater projects were set in sleeves, which I kind of find pretty funny. Um, so I did that with mohair and wool and it's kind of fitted. It's pretty itchy. There's few use cases for it, I feel like, because it's a tee that's fitted with mohair and wool. I find it hot and kind of itchy. Anyway, there's that. And then last spring, I knit the Tolsta Tee as a test knit for Rebecca Klo. And I think the yarn combination that I used for that project is gorgeous. I used the Walk Collection Linnea, which is a linen, silk, and alpaca blend with a strand of Bomulin from Isire. And the alpaca in the Linnea is I can't tolerate it on my skin. I find it so itchy and uncomfortable. It feels like almost like sandpaper on my chest. So 
two tees, both kind of green, both beautiful, but both unwearable for me. And then I've done three other tees. I test knit the Celeste tee for Sari Nordland. I test knit the Souffle tee for Laura Penrose. And I knitted the Cathedral, which is technically a full sleeve pullover, but I knit that as a tee by Claudia Q. And all three of those have gone to my nonna. All of this is to say I've knit many t-shirts, but I have yet to knit a t-shirt that has been successful for me. So I got it into my head that I wanted to knit like a staple t-shirt for myself. So I had it in my head that I was going to knit T number one by my favorite things knitwear. I went to the knitting loft and I picked up Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the colorway Mole. Now, this is a yarn and this colorway specifically that I have been drawn to for a very, very long time. In fact, when I test knit the Victoria scarf for Icy last year, um, my thoughts were between Mole and Dusty Banana. I ultimately went with the Dusty Banana for that project, but I've always, always, always loved this Mole colorway. And it's kind of like a stone gray brown. It's not gray, it's not brown, it's really truly, in my opinion, in the middle. I think it's quite a true neutral and I think you can see that against my skin. It doesn't wash me out, but it also doesn't light me up in the same way that, for example, you know, I think, I think you can see like the red kind of makes me glow a little more. This just kind of is like, truly neutral. I don't know what else to say about it. So this is the yarn that I picked up. I swatched with it, but T number one is a 24 stitch per four inch gauge, and it holds the Gepard Garn wild and soft together with their cashmere lace yarn. So that's going to give a thicker pairing than the cotton merino, which is a light fingering. And I realized I wasn't going to get gauge and because the construction of T number one is, it's a saddle shoulder, but it's not as streamlined of a construction as other saddle shoulder patterns are. I've seen a lot of people talk about how you need to break the yarn an unnecessary number of times. Um, so I ultimately decided that because there's more dependence on the row gauge for the saddle and ultimately that becomes all of your other stitches. Like it was just gonna to be too complicated to make the gauge work. So then serendipitously, I saw that Andrea Goggin Knits was doing a test call for her sunshine tea. And the yarn that is intended for that design is the Knitting for Olive fingering weight yarns. Her initial sample is done in the cotton merino in the cream and then the merino is used for the striping. And while we're doing the test knit, she is going to be knitting up a sample in the pure silk. So that's encouraging because it means that in doing the test knit with the intended yarn, I am more likely to get gauge for the pattern. And I am really, really excited about it. The test knit is 10 weeks. So it's running from, well, yesterday was February, 12th, 13th, and it's running until April something, 21st, I think, 10 weeks. So that's a lot of time. I mean, it does require five balls of yarn for my size. So it is going to be effectively knitting a sweater. This becomes like 1,250 meters or so. So it's gonna be a significant amount of knitting and it's on light fingering weight. I do suspect that I'll need to use 2.5 millimeter needles to help me with the parts that are worked flat to avoid some rowing out. I should be able to use three millimeter needles for all of my stockinette in the round, but because it's a really small gauge, while the 10 weeks is a lot of time, I wanna make sure I'm balancing that out with some thicker projects as well. So hopefully I'll cast this on later today, but I'm really, really excited about this project. 
So folks, that's all for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my project updates. I do suspect that the next time I get to see you, I will have at least the cowl finished, but probably the cowl, the sibling sweater, depending on when the elastic comes, and a sample of the Marl Mirage socks done. And then I'll have new whips to share with you. So I mean, that's usually how it works out, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for taking this time to hang out with me. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you wellness and happy knitting. Bye everyone.